Today I've got a nice number theory problem from my favorite number theory book. So let's dive right into it. So let's suppose that we have a prime P of the form 6n plus 1. Then what we'll show is that the numerator of this alternating harmonic series, so the sum as k goes from 1 to 4n of minus 1 to the k minus 1 over k, is divisible by that prime that we started with. So I think it's pretty interesting here that we've got this alternating harmonic series. It starts at 4n, yet the prime that we're working with is of the form 6n plus 1. We'll see how that comes into play a little bit later. So let's start by exploring. We'll look at a couple of the first cases. So if n is 1, then p is pretty clearly equal to 7. And here the calculation is easy. We have 1 minus a half plus a third minus a quarter is equal to 7 over 12. Now the case when n is equal to 2, we get p equal to 13, that's 12 plus 1. And in that case, that sum goes from 1 minus a half plus a third all the way up to minus an eighth. And you can do the calculation, but that ends up being 13 times 41 over 840. Notice that it's a multiple of 13 in the numerator there, which is exactly what we wanted to show. So let's see how we might prove this in general. And I think the motivation for our first step, which is a lemma, is that it would be easier to deal with this sum of rational numbers if they were all positive instead of being alternating positive and negative. Well, it turns out that there's this nice method, or it's kind of a well-known result that allows us to rewrite an alternating harmonic series as a sum of only positive terms, and it looks like this. And so the sum as k goes from 1 to 4n of minus 1 to the k minus 1 over k is in fact equal to 1 over 2n plus 1 plus 1 over 2n plus 2 plus all the way up to, that's going to end at 1 over 4n. And this is a special case of a more general result that would end at 2n here. In fact, if you just replace all of the n's with n over 2, or all of the two n's with n, we would have that more general result. Okay, so how are we going to prove this? Well, we're going to use a proof by mathematical induction. So I'd like to start with maybe the smallest case, which would be the n equals 1 case. So let's see how that might go. So we've got this sum as k goes from 1 to 4 of minus 1 to the k minus 1 over k. Notice we calculated that over here. That's already known to be 7 over 12. And now we just hope, so I'll just put a question mark over my equality here, that that's equal to the following. So let's see, we'll have 1 over 3, that's where that's going to start, plus 1 over 4, and let's see, that's where it's going to end, because that's going to be 4 times n. But is that equal to a third plus a quarter? Well, absolutely it's equal to a third plus a quarter, so we have proved our base case. Okay, so now let's make our induction hypothesis. So let's suppose for some m bigger than or equal to maybe 1, we have the result. So in other words, we have the sum as k goes from 1 to 4 times m of minus 1 to the k minus 1 over k is equal to 1 over 2m plus 1 added all the way to 1 over 4m. So I'll just leave it like that. Now let's consider the next case. So that's going to be the sum as k goes from 1 to 4m plus 4, because we're replacing m with m plus 1, of minus 1 to the k minus 1 over k. So let's see, that's going to be the same thing as the sum as k goes from 1 to 4m of minus 1 to the k minus 1 over k, and then plus the terms that we added on. So we've got to start with the 4m plus first term. So that's going to be plus 1 over 4m plus 1 minus 1 over 4m plus 2 plus 1 over 4m plus 3 and then minus 1 over 4m plus 4. So something like that. Okay, nice. But next up, I'd like to observe that I can apply my induction hypothesis to this first bit. And that will allow me to replace this as what? 
Let's see, we have one over two M plus one added all the way up to, let's see, one over four M. And then we'll have this plus one over four M plus one minus one over four M plus two plus one over four M plus three minus one over four M plus four. Great. And now I've just observed that I've got some terms in there that I need to make sure we know exist. So let's move this over here. We've got this one over two M plus one plus one over two M plus two plus one over two M plus three. So those are the terms that I'm going to make sure we remember about. Then I'd like to observe that this thing right here that I am boxing in green and then this thing right here that I'm boxing in green can be combined nicely. Notice that this one over here on the right is exactly half of this one over here on the left. So that means when I combine them together, I'll just get this one over the right, but with a positive sign. And then we've got something similar for this one that I'm boxing in blue here and here. So that means I can remove these over here on the left and then just pick up those on the right with a positive sign. So when all is said and done, now this sum starts at 1 over 2m plus 3 and adds all the way to 1 over 4m plus 4 with all positive coefficients. And well, that's exactly where we needed to end up to finish this proof by induction. Okay. So let's see how we can use this to prove our main result. Thanks for sticking around this long into the video. If you're enjoying the video, give it a thumbs up. And then if you haven't yet subscribed, consider subscribing. It really helps us out. Okay, so, so far what we've done is proven our alternating harmonic series that ends at 4n can be rewritten as a sum of positive terms like that on the right over there. And now I'd like to take a little bit of a step back and look carefully at those. And let's observe that the denominator of this one that I have in blue here, and then the denominator of the one that I have in blue over here on the right, those denominators sum to 6n plus 1. But 6n plus 1 was this prime that we were interested in. And then likewise, the denominator that we have right here that I have in this yellow box and the denominator in this other yellow box, those also sum to 6n plus 1, which is the prime that we have here. So I believe that motivates us to rewrite this sum where we've got those pairs together, those pairs that are exhibited by those boxed numbers with the same color. So let's see, I'm going to do that exactly. So I've got 1 over 2n plus 1 plus 1 over 4n. So I'm going to write that in blue parentheses so we know that it came from that uh, observation we made. And then 1 over 2n plus 2 plus 1 over 4n minus 1. I'll write that in yellow parentheses. And then let's see, now we just have to figure out where we end. And, well, let's observe that there are exactly an even number of numbers there. There are how many? Well, 2n terms in that sum. And so we've just got to find the middle two. And it's not too hard to see that the middle two are going to be 1 over 3n plus 1 over 3n plus 1, which, as you see, those terms have denominators that sum to 6n plus 1. In fact, all of the things that we group together will have denominators that sum to 6n plus 1. I think that's pretty clear because as we move down this way, the denominators get bigger, but if we move back this way, the denominators get smaller. And each of those jumps are by 1, so the sum of the denominators stays 6n plus 1. Okay, so now let's add these together. So if we find a common denominator, the common denominator will be that product. And then the numerator will just become the sum of those two denominators. So we've got 6n plus 1 over 4n times 2n plus 1. And then that's going to be plus, let's see, another 6n plus 1 over, now it's going to be 2n plus 2 times 4n plus 1. 
And then likewise, all of those are gonna sum similarly. This last one would be six n plus one over three n, and then we've got three n plus one. Okay, nice. And now I'm gonna add all of these together. So I can find a common denominator. I can in fact just take my common denominator to be the product of all of the denominators that we have there. And in the end, I'll have something like this. I'll have six n plus one times some number that I'll just call a. We won't really care what that number is, but that's what we just get from building all of the denominators up. And then downstairs, I have the product of all of these denominators. So two n plus one, two n plus two, all the way up to four n. Okay, nice. But now we could perhaps simplify this fraction a little bit. But I'd like to observe that whatever we do to reduce this fraction will not cancel this 6n plus 1. And that's because way up here we have assumed that 6n plus 1 is prime. But then every factor in this denominator is smaller than 6n plus 1. So that means that 6n plus 1 cannot be a factor of the denominator. But if it's a factor of the numerator and a factor of the denominator, when we put this fraction in lowest terms, the numerator will still be divisible by 6n plus 1. And just to put it all in a bow, we can rewrite this as p times a, maybe over, I just smush all of those together into some number b. Okay, so anyway, that is pretty much how this problem ends. We have shown that when we smush all of these together, we get something where the numerator is a multiple of the prime we started with. And that's a good place to stop.